Okay, today I'm going to talk about something that I will probably use these two definitions, control volume and control surface, 50 times in the modules 5, 6, and 7. So this you really need to understand so that we can communicate much easier with each other. Okay, control volume and control surface. Before that, I need to talk about something called a system. And these are straight from your thermodynamics courses. Okay. If you need more information, you can take a look at some of the uh, thermodynamics uh, lectures. They, this why this, they, they discuss this much in depth than me. So the system is an arbitrary volume with fluid particles in it. Right? So I picked an arbitrary volume with fluid particles in it. So let me give you an example. You're listening to me in a room this is a system okay it's an arbitrary volume that I picked and fluid particles are inside there's air right another example that I can give to the system uh, from thermodynamics we have this pith pistons right it goes up and down that is a system in the turbine I can pick the volume inside of it and analyze this so you can see that it goes uh, fairly wide it's an arbitrary volume with fluid particles in it okay and the boundary of it, well, we know that it's the edge of the system. It's called the boundary, right? We all know boundary conditions, boundary. But the system can be divided into two. There will be two of them. One is called, called the control mass. And basically, this is a version of the system where, well, the name says it's control mass. You're controlling the mass. No mass crosses the boundary. Right, so no mass crosses the boundary. This is called the control ma mass. I gave the example of the room that I have. Right, I'm inside right now. Is this a control mass? Not, no, not really, not really. It needs to be pretty well sealed with the environment so that there will be no mass crossing. I uh, have air conditioning on right now. Okay, so the air is coming in. So and also there's an inlet. So this is not a control mass. So what is a more general term? Okay, so I gave you what is not. So what else am I going to call these, you know, if this is not a control mass? I'm going to call this control volume. Okay, and the control volume, I abbreviate this as CV. In here, I have mass, momentum, and energy. You'll see why I talk about these three things soon. Cross the boundary. Now, uh, I said boundary, so there's a special name for it. It's called control surface. And I abbreviate this as C.S, right? You can imagine, it's very similar to the logic I have for CV. I call this CS, okay? So control volume is much more general. It is applicable to the room that I'm in. It's applicable to the turbine that I have. It's applicable to the piston in the thermodynamic example that I give. I have mass, momentum, and energy crossing the boundaries at this time, okay? So I would say majority of the systems that we encounter day to day are control volume. Starting from the next module called module number five, conservation of mass, you will see that I will apply this to a control volume. So that's why this is very important that we understand. Although this is an important concept, it's so easy to understand, right? I gave the examples of all that is stationary and non-deforming ex examples of the control volume. So the question is, can the control volume move or can it ch change shape? Yeah, it does. Okay, there's an opportunity for that. Let's say that I pick a balloon, right? And if I put air in it, there's a mass transfer, right? A deforming control volume, basically. This refers to the shape, so the shape changes, like the balloon. If I put more mass into the system, it's going to get larger and larger, the volume is. That's quite all right, but that will be a little bit harder to analyze. Or I have a moving control volume. And now, this is actually the shape doesn't change, but I'm not interested in the position. The position does change, okay? And let me give you an example. Uh, I'm in a bus. I am going uh, on the bus, right? So the volume inside of the bus is, it is a control volume, but it's moving, right? It is some particular velocity, it may have acceleration, it can deaccelerate, etc., etc. I'd like you to be 
cognizant of that. Also, I mentioned mass, momentum, energy, right? So I would like you to highlight that I'm going to do the conservation of mass, and that will be module 5. Then I will do conservation of momentum, that will be module 6. And then I will do conservation of energy, that will be module 7. So how important these are, you can now realize, okay? So I will reserve three modules to this. And when I teach myself, I ask a question about these in first midterm. I ask a question about this in the second midterm. I have a question about this in my cumulative final examination as well. So very important topics. And now next segment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you a theorem where you will be able to relate things from one reference frame to another reference frame. So that is a, one of the most important equations or theorems in the fluid dynamics.